the only thing I could think was I just said, Jesus, save me. And I remember once, I mean, I, I remember that now, screaming, Jesus, save me. Mm -hmm. And right then, I, it was a normal day. I had no idea what was in store for me. So I was, um, I, I went home. My friend came by and he was like, check out the car. I'm like, what's, he wanted to go out and was, let's go to the casino. I'm like, okay. Yeah. So we go to the casino. We're partying. And, um, I've been on a good one for a while. Anyways, we go to the casino. We hit two jackpots. And, um, my buddy, <laughs> I remember he told me that he was like, you're the luckiest dude in the world. And I was like, I know, but I, I was, it was just a good time in my life. I was thinking I, out of nowhere, I feel like someone hit me right in the chest with a sword and I'm like, bam. And I'm like, Oh shit. And it doubled me over. The person I'm with thought I was playing around in there trying to, you know, like playing around. I'm like, oh, I'm serious, man. Something's wrong. And it was crippling me over. I'm like, Oh, shit. And uh, it was weird. It felt like someone hit me right in the chest with a sword and started pulling down, right? So I'm like, I threw her off me. I'm like, I got to get to the hospital. And I take off running down this hall. And I'm like looking for my friend. And um, he was moving my car at the time. But uh, but I caught him. And I'm like, Nick, you got to get me to the hospital, you know. And he's all like, what's going on? And I'm like, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And, and the front desk of the hotel, they're like, is something wrong? We're going to call 911. And they're all trying to hold me down, say they're going to call 911 and stuff. And I'm like, F911, you know, <laughs> get me to the goddamn hospital, dude. And I threw, and, and I, well, I grabbed him by his shirt. I pulled him and I said, give me the, the hospital, you know, and he was like, okay. And so we jump in the car, we haul ass. And I don't, I, I, I remember driving extremely fast and running lights because I was screaming, I'm fucking dying, you know. So we get to the hospital and we pull right up to the ER. And I, I mean, I remember the car, we were power slide because she's like, well, what? I mean, we were hauling ass. And I went to get out and my legs didn't work anymore. After I could talk again, because I was about, after I came out of the coma, I had about two weeks that I had this trach, so I couldn't talk to nobody. All the memories came flooded back to me, you know. I knew that I was crossing over. I was, I was leaving my body. I could feel. My energy is leaving my body. I can't explain it. It's a weird feeling. I was crossing over into like dimensions. Another, like, it's, I can't even put this into words because it's so hard. All of a sudden, everything went black on me. And I'm like, I'm dead. And I remember thinking, where the hell am I? Am I, am I alive or dead? I thought I, I'm dead. And everything was black and it was so freaking cold. Everything was so cold, you know, and I don't know why I said I see Satan. I don't, I don't remember seeing Satan at all. I, I don't, <laughs> but I knew that I was not in a good place. I was in a dark void. Oh, and here's something really important, too. Um, there was this magnetic, like, black tar that I could see everywhere, and it was dripping. I could hear it splatting, like, going... <laughs> And I was like, what the hell? And there was this, just this dark, there was an energy there that was so strong of negative, a negative freaking energy that it's like, imagine all the G-force, like when you get in a roller coaster and you hit that, that dip. The fear I felt there was horrific, okay? Because, like I said, I, I wasn't on the bed anymore. I was like... <clears throat> I went from being horizontal to vertical feeling, okay? Like, and I don't know if I was like standing or floating, I don't know, but I was just, I just knew where I was at and I had to get out of there. Okay, that's all I could think was, holy crap, I gotta get out of here. I mean, and I was terrified. And oh yeah, when I was calling for my dad, he didn't come. I never saw my dad. My uh, grandmother and my father and anybody that's passed, I didn't see any friends. Okay, that I had here on Earth, I didn't see anybody like that. Um, but at that moment, when I was in that negative thing, the only thing I could think was, I just said, "Jesus, save me!" And I remember once. I mean, I, I can remember that now. Screaming, "Jesus, save me!" Mm -hmm. And right then this spark popped up in the middle of my eye, like right here. 
and it was like someone lit a piece of paper. Like if you lit tissue on, you know, like tissue paper with a lighter, that's how it just went. Everything I could see, and I was, I was engulfed in this white light, this white presence, energy that just pushed all that darkness out. It, it and I was surrounded by this light. And my gosh, I, I I felt like I peed my pants. I just this warmth came over my entire soul, and I remember thinking, "Oh my God, I'm safe." I just I didn't know where I was at, but I knew I was safe. I made it. That's what I was thinking. I made it. Oh my God, thank you, thank you, God, thank you. I made it. I I made it right. And I was like, and I remember like thinking, just kind of like looking around, like in awe. And as I looked into the light. There was really depth to this light, if I, if you can imagine what I'm trying to say. As I looked into it, I could see deep. And in the light, <clears throat> where all of a sudden, I could see these other lights that were morphing. They were like moving around. And I was like, what is that? And there was these colors that were the, oh my God, they're the most beautiful things I've ever seen in my life. They were the most beautiful colors that I, I've ever seen in my life and I can't tell you what they look like. I can't even tell you, describe the colors because they're not in the rainbow spectrum but they're colors our eyes can only see you know the rainbow I don't know if they were ultraviolet in that spectrum or ultra red I don't know what spectrum but all I know is there was a multitude of them and they were beautiful and I remember there was metallic colors and as I looked at these colors, I realized those are souls. Those are people. They had faces. And I, they, oh my God, they were so beautiful. And I've never seen beauty uh, to this degree. And everybody was different. Every color was a different person. And they, and some people had other, there was multiple colors in them. But they were so beautiful and they had faces and I didn't recognize anybody. I knew every person there and I was just like, Oh my God, my people, I'm, I'm, I'm here. And they were like glad to see me too. I was like, but there was no words being exchanged. There was no words, but I knew exactly. And think about this too. If in the afterlife in heaven, if it gets rid of wickedness, well, what is the wicked, one of the most wicked things? Our tongue is, is full of deceit. You can lie, you can cheat, you know, you can be something, you know. But in this realm, there was no communication like that. So you could only be authentic. That was it. Every being there had its own beauty there. And right then, that's when I realized that here on, it was with the beauty that God, our creator, intended us to have. That the world, you know, the world lies to you and tells us that we, that we dilute, that we neglect, and we don't realize because we are in this three dimensional physical world and we think our outer looks, and you know, we don't even allow people to grow old gracefully. People are like, oh, they're just old, you know, whatever. Let me tell you, we all go through it. No one's going to get around it. And, but that beauty on the inside, that light, the light that's behind every smile. And I don't care how ugly you are. If you smile, there's a light. So, and I'm real happy where I'm at. Okay. I'm really cool with where I'm at and I'm cool with staying up there. But at that time, then all of a sudden this white light being, and it wasn't a shadow figure with a white light around it. No, this was like another whiter light that came out from the depths of it. And it was really tall. I'm, I'm six five and it stood like higher than me. So I like was looking up at it like this. And I, I don't remember any face. I don't know if that was Jesus. I don't know if it was an angel. I don't know if it was, it was just a silhouette of a hu like a, a human figure, but it was all, it was all light. It had the, the presence of unconditional love. Yeah, that's the best way I can say it. I don't know if it's female or male or masculine or female. That was, that wasn't even going through my head. I just was like, oh. but as soon as I looked up at it, 
my son's life, my life, but my son's life went by like this without me. I I wanted to be a father for so long, and I I told you I raised us three step kids too, and I love them with all my heart. And to be to be be able to be to have somebody call me dad is like the best sound in my ears. It's the most beautiful sound. It was my ears like, oh, dad, you know. Now my my other kids never call me dad. They call me D. For mm-hmm. house or stepdad, but and they love me, but but just that sounds so. Anyways, when I looked up to him, it was like my his life, my with that or or mine. It wouldn't have been mine, but I guess I just saw that go past me like this so quick, and I remember it like sent me back in reality, and I was like, "Don't take me yet, no, please don't, not yet. I I, I don't not yet." And I woke up, and I was, and boom, I was there. Here's one thing I think about when I think about God. God, timing, okay? God's impeccable timing. Father time, God. When when I went to the hospital, um, and every doctor that come in be like, you do know you're a miracle, right? Like, just for me to be able to get from the hotel to there, if I would have called and let them call an ambulance, I'd be dead. There was, that doctor just happened to be there that day. And he just scrubbed out, like I told you, he was getting ready to go home, and I showed up, and he scrubbed back in and did an 11-hour surgery. Or after I came out of the coma, and, like, the chief surgeon would come in there, and they are like, everybody, the nurses, the uh, the ICU, they took care of me. Everybody was just like, I was like, like a mate. They were just all freaked out because I pulled through it. That was one thing. They none of them actually thought I was going to because it was so bad. Um, and even to be like talking like this is like a total. Uh, and and I had doctors from other hospitals coming to see me to see this like because I was I shouldn't be alive. This wasn't like there's other people that survived aorta dissections, but one like this is so unlikely. It's not even funny. It's crazy. Okay. So, um, yes, yeah, so the, the chief surgeon came down and he, he told me personally, he said, I want to tell you, it was like he had divine intervention. That's what he said. He said, he, I never seen an operation so orchestrated so beautifully. And he goes, and I know you probably wouldn't understand what I'm trying to say, but the way this man, he goes, I, I, it was like he had divine help. That's what a surgeon told me, the chief surgeon. Surgeons don't talk like that. They're mm-hmm. very egotistical people. They're usually like, they, they get a cod complex because they save lives every day. So, and then when I went to do a follow up with my chief, with the guy that did the surgery on me, um, I remember my first time I saw him and after I got out of the hospital and, uh, he came in and I was like, the man with the magic hands. Oh, hey, buddy. He goes, uh, don't be, don't be thinking me. You need to be thinking the guy upstairs because I don't know how we're talking right now. So those are the things of God's timing, you know, just everything like me happened to be that close to that hospital. That doctor was right there. Everything kind of played into it the way it should. It, everything had to, so many things had to fall in exact line for me to be alive.